What are the odds that 30 weeks are gonna go by on the calendar and nothing's gonna happen that gets in your way? Like the longer your prep is, the more likely it is that you are inviting stuff to go wrong just because it's a larger period of time. It's hard to keep things quiet for 14 to 16 weeks. You start to extend that to 20, 22, 24 weeks, the odds of there being some shit that goes wrong goes way up from there. So. What's up everybody and welcome back. I am Darren Starr. We are two weeks out now, less than two weeks from the Battle at the River, Chattanooga, Tennessee, June 8th, 2024. Today I'm actually 13 days out. By the time this gets posted, it will be 12 days out. So it has been a wild and eventful week, unfortunately. <laughs> So we're, we're coming back around. We're coming back around. It's just been like, this has been, uh, let, let me just start off by saying this prep, by the time it's done, will be 22 weeks long. The first 17 weeks was pretty much flawless, pretty easy, no problems. The last five are proving to be uh, just horrific. Um, now there's still two to go. So really I'm just saying the last three have been really a mess really mess. So now I've got to kind of pick up the pieces and put it back together. So let's, uh, let's dive in and see what kind of changes we implemented here and just look at all the things. So as far as changes that were implemented, really it was just a geographic change or a location change. You know, I checked in last week from my parents' kitchen. Now I'm back home. Uh, it was, uh, there wasn't really any change. It was really just trying to manage fatigue, manage, exha manage exhaustion, manage stress, uh, still get some decent sleep, try to get in some reasonable training, try to hit most cardio. And I would say I did those things okay-ish for the most part. Um, there was a little bit of an episode here, so we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to the tracker. Uh, there, were, there were some issues for the last week. It wasn't perfect. It was by far the worst week I've had on prep, um, which when you're three weeks out, that's not when you want your worst week. So uh, there's some lessons to be learned from this. We're going to talk about those as well. Uh, but the changes to implement um, going forward, um, there's a big one, and I'll put that on screen right now. And that's just how I'm tracking things really digging into the minutia day by day. Uh, I don't know how well this is going to show on the screen just because there's a lot of stuff in, in this. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in this, in this tracking sheet here. What I'm doing is noting my exact times for every meal, what the macros are, and then my weight after every meal, and then how I'm feeling as well. Um, trying to really just track like digestive performance as much as anything else when I'm getting in a nap, seeing how these things impact the weight kind of meal by meal throughout the day. So I can really micromanage things. And what I want to do right now, my body is still just in a real state of flux, like coming off the travel, I'm still really stressed. I'm not sleeping well. I'm waking up about every hour on the hour for the most part. Um, so that's all stuff that I'm doing everything I can on that front. I'm taking some sleep aids, some cortisol management supplements. Uh, I tried a CBD gummy for the first time in my life last night. Didn't do anything for me. Um, and uh, just at this point, like whatever, anything, like get the stomach feeling good, get some sleep so that you can perform reasonably well. I had an okay workout today, wasn't too bad. Um, I'm just trying to manage that. So I know that there's a lot of things that are gonna be kind of shifting over the next couple of days with any luck here. I'm hoping by the time Tuesday, Wednesday rolls around, things will be a little bit more predictable. Um, just kind of knowing like the rhythm at which my body works, it will probably take just a couple of more days to really get into a nice groove with things. And then we'll have some predictable data. Right now these things are jumping around all over the place. So it's really hard to know for sure. And also when you just don't feel off, it's hard to make judgments. What I'm really looking to do here is correlate how I feel with how I look. And what I want to do is try and make sure that I get up on stage at a weight where I feel the best. And so that's why I kind of micromanage this a little bit. So right now, this is typically something that I would save till peak week. Um, but for what I'm trying to do right now, just because of the state of flux that everything's in, I'm just trying to get a little bit of a jump start on it so I can start to develop a sense of what the trends are and just really track like, hey, you know, when I get in a nap, I feel way better after that. Like I did, uh, you know, post meal two today, it says one hour nap. And then between two and three, I spent a couple hours cleaning the garage. So I was active on my feet. And I had this major distension in my stomach before meal two. I had meal two, and then that just kind of cleared up. And I think the nap helped, and then remaining active helped with that too. So that's going to help inform some things that I want to do going forward here for the next you know, 12 days. So um, that's it. So let's take a look at, uh, at some posing and see how things look. 
So two videos here. One of these is fasted this morning. I did not find this one to be very impressive at all. And then I went to the gym and uh, it was back and biceps today. I did the back workout, went in and did this posing session from the gym after that. And then post posing went and finished biceps up just because I had to get into the room quickly because there was a group class that was going to be coming in there. So um, I think that looks better. Um, the, the legs still aren't popping very much. Um, I think typically... My advice to people is don't really get too much of a pump in your legs. You know, you've already got blood in there just because grab, that's how gravity works. Um, but I think I need a little bit or at least maybe like do a little bit of stretching and some isometric flexing to get a little bit more, uh, a little bit more activity in there because they look a little flat here. Granted, everything looks a little flat at this point. But uh, I, on Friday mid-workout, um, I took a quick video, which I'll probably pop that in later later. Uh, later in the vlog here. Um, it's kind of hard to see in that video, but there was, I mean, they were looking good at that point. So a little bit of a pump certainly helps. So overall, like things look okay. I think um, mostly like I just couldn't control my midsection here. And part of that is I've done a terrible job of uh, keeping up with any kind of predictable vacuum schedule. Um, I didn't take my waist trainer with me to Oregon either. So, um, and then I had a, an episode where <laughs> everything kind of got away from me. So midsection definitely kind of took a step in the wrong direction this week. I'm not happy about about that. So I have 12 days to catch it up. Can I do it? Um, not to my satisfaction probably, um, but I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do what I can. Uh, it probably won't get all the way to the finish line, but you know, we'll, we'll make it a little bit better at least. So overall things are looking good. You know, I good ish, you know, I'm still like in my head about it, of course, and I'm not happy with how things look now compared to how I think they could have looked had I been like in home and in a predict at home and in a predictable routine the whole time. Things look a lot better. I feel like at this point I'd be in cruise control and just like super chill as opposed to scrambling to try and get things just to the point where they feel good again, like to where my body feels good. Um, so I don't know. Um, I did take posing um, videos every day. I went to the gym in Oregon. They look pretty good overall. So um, I know it's still there. Uh, it's just I got to fix a lot of how I feel under the hood. Okay, numbers for the week. Let's check it out. Here's the tracker. You can see I marked my travel dates here. So the 16th was traveling to Oregon. The 23rd was traveling back here to Tennessee. That was a rest day, short sleep. I got about four hours sleep that night. I did take my scale with me. So those numbers are all accurate. Um, uh, there was a, a little bit of a binge eating episode on the 21st, uh, which, you know, it's funny. The podcast that I did last week was like, how I've overcome my binge eating. And then what happens here? Well, it's like, clearly I cursed myself because a couple days after that, here you go. So that was dumb, um, but uh, nonetheless, it happened. Uh, I, what I had done there, so it was just, I don't wanna get into the whole thing about everything that went on in this trip. Let's just say it was very stressful. Um, there was a lot to manage and I did not manage it particularly well. I put one foot in front of the other for the most part. It was just uh, challenging. It was very, very difficult. Um, and I was just falling asleep all throughout the day, dragging ass in my workouts, grinding through cardio, just sleepwalking through it basically. and. It, going back to the analogy that I always like to make of the stress bucket, you know, you've got all these things that go into your stress bucket. Some of them are good, like the stress from training is good. That's how you make your body change. The stress of dieting is good. That's how you get your body to lean out. But then you've got all the other stuff and it goes into that same bucket. And when your bucket overflows, you shit the bed. And that's what I did. Like my body was just like shutting down, like, nope, not doing it. Um, and so what I decided to do also just because I was fatigued, I was really flat, I was depleted. Um, I'm like, we're just going to do an untracked meal here and just eliminate some dietary stress. And we did that. And, um, you know, it was, it was Chipotle. It was the first time I've ever had a burrito at Chipotle. I've always gotten a bowl there. Um, I got the chips as well. Probably didn't need to do that. And then, uh, I didn't stop after that. That was the problem. So the thing is like, wow. For me, at least, I know a lot, I've been talking with clients, a lot of other people are like this as well. When you go back to your parents' house, you kind of revert to your little kid tendencies. And so it's like, I did the Chipotle, I stopped by a convenience store and got some crap, and then I had a couple of bowls of ice cream after that, and then I was just rooting around the kitchen for other shit, and it's like, and the thing is, like, I get back home and all that stuff goes away. Like, I don't care about any of that now. But it's just being there, it like takes me back to being like an 11 year old or something like that. I don't know, it's, it was weird. I can't really explain it. So 
Clearly, like, the binge-eating monster has not been fully slayed, but uh, mostly controlled, except in extreme circumstances. I honestly think if this was a normal trip, um, kind of like my last trip was, I didn't have any episodes like that. It was not as stressful. It was just the stress of travel, but there were no, you know, health complications or anything like that to worry about at that point. So uh, that was well handled, and this just, everything got to me. And uh, honestly, if, I, if I'm being totally honest with, with you about it, like, I don't give a shit. Like, it happened, whatever. Okay, I felt like crap the next day. Um, and did it really resolve the fatigue that I was trying to combat with that? No, no, it didn't. So uh, it sent me back a little bit, and I felt like a dumbass just because it was a total lack of control. Um, and I felt kind of stupid about that, but otherwise, like, who cares? So these are the numbers. You can see we're back down to 2072 um, as of this morning. The average is still down for the week, even with a spike in there a little bit. So, you know, it's it's okay. It's in, it's in the right general range here. Um, it's, uh, it's okay. It's okay. Um, I, I'm giving myself some inflated numbers on some of these workouts. I think my, my quality scale, my one to 10 scale in that Q column there, I think I'm being a little bit more generous here. Like I think that eight for legs was probably legit push, maybe not an eight back on my last day in Oregon, probably not an eight. Um, today's poll, I don't have a number in here yet. Let me type one in that I would say is probably a good 7.5. I kind of kept my pace up a little bit more brisk. So I felt pretty good about that. Um, so yeah, those are the numbers for the week, such as they are. You know, one other thing that I forgot to mention here was that I also am sick <laughs> and I have been now for about a month. You can probably hear it. I'm congested. I still have a sore throat. This is a lot of what's keeping me awake at night as well. At this point, I think it's just stress related sickness. I don't think there's anything more to it than that. Um, it's just the stress of prep and then everything else that's going on top of that as well. It's just, it's putting me in a position where my body just can't really fight it and get over it and recover from it. So I'm just kind of having to deal with that, trying to mitigate symptoms as much as I can, but it's not working very well. So I wanted to take a quick pause here because I think, you know, the, the other thing to talk about here is next steps, but really it's just, you know, continue to fill out that detailed tracking sheet that I showed before and just kind of micromanage the week. I'm not planning on any macro changes or food changes or anything like that. Um, and then peak week will probably be pretty similar. Um, I will know at that point if I'm going to need to worry about how I manage weight uh, with my carb up for the week or not. I think I'll be okay. I think I'll be in a good place where I don't have to worry about going back up over the cap or anything like that. So, um, what I did want to talk about, though, was lessons learned from this prep, um, just because um, I think there's... <laughs> It, it's never too early to do a post-mortem when you know what's gone wrong already. And so uh, right now, I am 20 weeks into this 22-week prep. That is four weeks longer than the previous longest prep I have ever done. And as I mentioned before, everything was going fine for the first 17 weeks up until I was five weeks out. Now, some of that was because that's when the travel started, uh, but also like I was really kind of starting to feel it at that point. So... The, a couple of lessons that you learn are don't travel on prep if you can help it. Um, or if you do, like if this was like a work-related trip or something like that, that'd be fine. Going to visit family though, a vacation, God, just horrible idea, horrible idea. So um, to the extent that you can help it, like I kind of had to do it the first trip, like I was overdue, I needed to go do it. The second one was just non-negotiable, I had to go back. So um so you can't really help it, but if you have the option to avoid travel, do it. It's always way smoother that way. The other thing that I've learned personally for myself is, you know, if I scroll back up on my tracker here, I started this prep at 22 weeks out at a good 247 pounds. And so now I'm down to 207. So I've dropped 40 pounds. What I need is a shorter prep where I don't have to drop so much weight. So I think realistically, if I were to top out in the off season, something closer to 235 to 240, you know, a good seven pounds, seven to 10 pounds lighter than the max that I got to this last time, that's gonna be way more productive. And it's gonna, I'm setting myself up for a much easier prep that can be a more meaningful length. The other thing is when you prep for 22 weeks, let's just extend that and say you prep for 30 weeks, right? What are the odds that 30 weeks are gonna go by on the calendar and nothing's gonna happen that gets in your way? Like the longer your prep is, the more likely it is that you are inviting stuff to go wrong just because it's a larger period of time. It's hard to keep things quiet for 14 to 16 weeks. You start to extend that to 20, 22, 24 weeks, the odds of there being some shit that goes wrong goes way up from there. So a shorter prep makes sense for a lot of reasons. It still has to be long enough that you get 
stage lean. Um, but if you can keep yourself a little tighter in the off season, like my off season got a little sloppy, you know, I was eating 800 grams of carbs a day because I was really just trying to grow. But I think, you know, if I had focused more on training quality, a little bit more on recovery, take the extra day off, take my low carb days and bring those down a little bit more. Um, and don't worry about pushing the carbs up quite so much. Like at some point, you know, I was increasing carbs just to try and keep increasing weight, even though I wasn't really getting a performance increase from that. At that point, the smart move is just to just back off, do a reset, take everything back down to a baseline level, give yourself three or four weeks to kind of just reset back into a hold phase and then resume your push. Maybe during that hold phase, you drop two to four pounds. Great. You're giving yourself a little bit more headroom to work with while still keeping tighter. So everything that I would change, honestly, about this prep relates to what I would do differently in the preceding off season. So that helps inform what I'm going to do after this show. So that's the main thing that I would take home from it. So like I said, it's never too early to start learning lessons. There's going to be a lot more, you know, there's going to be video um, of uh, everything that happens on stage. I'll be able to break that down, uh, formulate my list of regrets from that once it happens as well. We'll see how it goes. So anyway, um, that's where we're at for this week. So as of today, posting this 12 days out. Um, by the time we check in next week, I will be starting peak week and might do things a little bit differently. We might do a very brief daily update that week just to kind of micromanage things. I don't know. It depends on how tired I am. <laughs> we might, might do a little uh, YouTube live or something like that. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, I appreciate y'all hanging in there. Um, I don't think there were any Q&A this week. Um, if you have them, shoot them over. Um, otherwise, I appreciate y'all. Thank you very much for watching. Appreciate the support. Um, you know, the, these videos don't get a lot of comments on them, um, but I do get a lot of personal notes via email and through Instagram, people who watch it here and they message me there. So I do appreciate all the support from everybody. Um, so thank you for that. It does not go unnoticed. I try to respond to everybody when I can. So um, appreciate y'all. Thank you for watching. Um, like the video, subscribe, comment, etc. Peace out.